Hello and welcome. Today we are learning about loops and iteration in JavaScript. Let's get started. We'll start today by looking at while loops. We'll start with a variable called my number and we'll set it equal to zero. And then we'll compose our loop. It starts with the word while. And then we put a condition in parentheses and I'll say my number is less than 50. So while my number is less than 50, we will do what's inside our squigglies. And at that point, we'll say console.log my number. So we will print the number to the log with the console log function. And then we will increase my number by one. And there are a couple of ways to do that. So first I'll spell it out. My number equals my number plus one. So we are reassigning a new value to the my number variable. And this way, each time the loop executes, we will increase the number by one. So the next time my number is logged to the console, it will be it incremented by one. However, I don't usually do it this way. There is a little bit of a shorthand for increasing or incrementing a number by one. This is called the post increment. And so right after the variable, we put two pluses and it will do the same thing. It will add one to the variable my number reassign the value. So if it's zero, the next time it's one, the next time it's two, you get the idea. I will save the file and this should execute. And there you can see it starts at zero and it goes while it is less than 50. So it ends at 49 here in our console. If we wanted to go from the number one to the number 50, we could do that a few different ways. We could start with the number one and we could say, while my number is less than or equal to 50, you can see we get 50 over here. We could also go back to zero and go back to less than 50. And we could increment our number by one each time before we log it to the console. And that way it's going to satisfy the requirement that it's less than 50 when it's 49, and then we'll increment the number to 50 before we log it to the console. And you can see we have 50 and we start with the number one. So there are several ways to think through what you're trying to achieve with a loop like that and in incrementing numbers. We could also increment by two or something else and you can really increment by any value you want. There's shorthand for that as well. Instead of saying my number equals my number plus two, we can say plus equals two. So every time the loop executes, it will increment by two. And here you can see it goes 46, 48, 50, and we get the result we expected. One thing to remember with loops, do not create an endless loop. I'll put that here in a comment. Don't create an endless loop. And that is because it will just kind of go on forever until you run out of memory. You're going to end up probably trying to close out of your browser or closing out of the tab. There are other ways to stop a loop. If you have more than one tab open, the first thing you should probably do is try to close the tab. Uh, there is a documented way to do it in Chrome DevTools, but it's not is easy to do as you may think. Uh, you kind of have to catch the code between those little tiny milliseconds of executing to hit it just right to get it to work the way it's supposed to. The easiest way I've found is to close the tab or close the browser. At some point working with loops and learning, you're going to, to forget essentially to increment the number or whatever uh, meets the requirement to stop the loop and you'll create an endless loop and you'll find out what I mean. So don't feel bad if you do it. Okay, the next loop we want to move on to is a do while loop. It is very, very similar to a while loop, but the main difference, let me just come back up here and do this right here. We'll say do, and then we'll get rid of the requirement here altogether. Do 
and then we'll put the while afterwards and we'll put my number is less than 50. Now, the main thing to remember with a do while loop, really the only difference, is it's going to do this at least one time. So if I come back, I should have, let me just reverse that by an undo. There we go, we've got our loop back the way we had it. This, if we set the number 250, this won't do anything. We got nothing in the console. However, if we create a do while loop, it will do this and we'll say console log my number and then we'll put the while afterwards while my number is less than 50. Now let's see what happens. We got 50 in the console one time. And that is because with a do while loop, you're going to execute this code block at least once, even if this requirement is not met. What happens in the do block will happen at least once. And that is a huge difference between just the while loop and the do while loop. Now let's delete most of this. We'll keep our my number variable. We'll set it back. Well, we don't even need that right now. Let's get rid of that too. Uh, and we're going to look at a for loop. A for loop is very common in JavaScript and in some other languages as well. Um, and it starts with the word for, as you might expect. And then it's got three components inside its parentheses. And the first is the variable. Many times you'll see a variable with just a letter like i for integer or x or something like that. You could use any variable name you want, but many times you'll see something just like this with let i equal zero, and then maybe while i is less than or equal to 10, the loop will execute, and then we'll increment i by one each time the loop increments. And then we'll log to the console the value of i. So let's check this out. Yes, and we've got zero through 10 because I said less than or equal to 10. If I had said less than 10, it would stop at nine. Or we can start the value of i at one, and then we could say less than or equal to 10, and we would simply get one through 10 instead of zero through 10. Different ways to construct the loop. Also, you can break these things out of the four parentheses. This would not have to be here. You could leave that empty. You would still need the semicolon after the condition, and you could increment i at the bottom of the, uh, the code block of the for loop. Just like this, the same thing exactly happens. You could even define i before the loop, and the same thing would happen. But it still has those three spaces that you have to allow for the for loop. So most of the time when you see a for loop constructed, you will see all three inside the parentheses. So you define the counter variable, and sometimes you'll see it named counter, and then you put the condition, and then you increment. Well, you don't have a semicolon there, though, because that's the end of that. And that's pretty much it. Let's run it one more time to make sure we don't have a typo. Yep, we're good. And that is a for loop. However, for loops are much handier than just counting to 10. You can loop through many things in JavaScript. So let's do something else with the for loop. Let's define a name. We've done this before. Name, I'll use my name, Dave. And now in the for loop, instead of saying uh, while i is less than or equal to 10, let's say while i is less than or equal to name dot length, the length property. And now when we log to the console, instead of just logging the value of i, Let's go ahead and log name with the character at method and put i in there. 
Oh, one extra parenthesis there, we're good. And we want to start I at zero because the first letter, the capital D in my name, would be at position zero. Mm -hmm. Now, when we do that, we get each letter of my name on a new line in the console. So you can see we can break up things and execute different values. In the future, we'll learn about data objects and arrays that we can go through and handle each item in the array or each item in the object with this similar type of method in uh, constructing loops. So that comes in very handy. Now let's also go back and look at a while loop and just think about what else we could do with it or maybe something similar to what we just did. I'll go ahead and start here and we'll define something called counter just to have something different. This will be our counter just like I was. And now with the while, one thing I didn't show earlier is we can just say while true. Now this will execute forever unless we use the keyword that I'm about to show you. We'll go ahead and define another variable named my letter. And let's have my letter just be undefined for now. But then once we get into the loop, oh, we need my name as well. So that name, we'll bring that back. Once we get into the loop, we're going to define my letter because my letter is going to be equal to name and counter, which is our counter variable. And as you might guess, we're going to need to increment counter as we go through the loop. But this would keep happening forever. And eventually, of course, we'd have an error because once we got past the number three for counter, uh, we'd run out of letters in my name, zero through three for the position letters. So what we want to do is go ahead and log my letter while we have a letter. And then let's say if my letter equals, let's not wait for the E, let's go to the V. If my letter equals V break, we're going to use the break keyword and we'll break out of this loop. I'll save that. And you can see we get DAV. So you can create a loop that just continually executes until you get the value you want. And you can specify that condition within the code block using the keyword break to stop the loop rather than putting the condition in the parentheses of the while. And as you might guess, you can also do that with a do while as well. You could even create a for loop that goes on longer than you need it to and then use the break keyword to get out of the loop. Now that we've talked about the break statement, sometimes I say keyword, statement, keyword, uh, we need to add the continue statement into the discussion as well. And so let's modify this loop just a little bit. We'll once again say why counter is less than or equal to three, because we don't want to go on forever with the changes we're going to make. And then we'll leave this line the way it is and notice I am, of course, pulling the letter out of the name with brackets instead of using the character at method, but this works in the same way. And then we have console log my letter and we'll continue to log the letter. But after that, let's add another if statement and we'll say if counter equals one, we're going to activate some code within this block and we'll say counter plus equals two. We're going to add two to counter if it equals one, which will immediately make it equal to three instead of two, which is what we would normally do with the increment down here at the bottom of our loop. And after that, we're going to use the continue statement. And the continue statement says, all right, continue the loop back at the top. Skip the rest of the loop. And so we're going to skip this increment we're going to skip this if statement where it checks to see if the letter is V or not. And so if we think about this, we're going to come in through the loop and it'll be zero and it'll execute the way we expect it to. It will be one and when it gets to the counter, gets to one, it will stop here. It will increment by two and then start again. And at this point, it will be equal to three. And so when the loop is equal to three, it will execute one more time 
will come in. It will print the last letter of my name, which should be E, and it'll send that to the log. And from there, it'll come down here and it won't be equal to V, so it'll skip that. It will increment counter one more time, but we won't use it after that. So in the end, counter will actually be equal to four. And we'll be able to see that once we break out of the loop. So I'll go ahead and log counter as well, just so you can see that value. And let's go ahead and execute this by saving the file. And as expected, we got D, A, and at this point, we this was position zero, position one, and then we added two, skipped the rest of the loop with the continue statement, and executed the loop one more time, and grabbed the letter in the third position and sent it to the console. And then we were finished with the loop. And then when we logged the value of counter, it was actually equal to four when we finished our loop because this applied one last time at the end. And that is the continue keyword. Hi, I'm Dave, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to keep striving for daily progress instead of perfection. Subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be alerted when I post new tutorials. I'll see you next time.